guys, this is Ignite for Fire, and I'm back at you with a brand new unboxing video. So as you can see before me, there's a Nintendo Switch starter pack for Skarnas Imaginators, and I bought this today alongside a bunch of other things which I'll show off in the next hunting video for you guys. Um, but either way, I managed to pick this up from Game for an incredible 1499, which I'm incredibly happy about. So that means that I not don't only get a new game for my Nintendo Switch, but I also get two characters that I never had before, such as regular Kingpin and regular Golden Queen right here. And I also get that glorious creation crystal, so 14 99 for the whole that was a great deal for me, which is why I definitely jumped on it when I had the opportunity to. And I am very excited to be bringing you this unboxing today, um, especially since I never actually um, recorded any Skyless Imaginator starter pack unboxings for you guys. So um, before we actually get into the unboxing of this uh, Nintendo Switch Skylanders Imaginator starter pack, we're first going to have a look at the box, as we always would. So as you can see, first of all, we've got our awesome... Um, Kingpin art right here, and then our Sir Huntington as well, coming out from our fiery creation crystal. Along with, of course, the um, No Under Freeze, Peggy 7, and um, Activision, of course, a publisher. And then included inside is um, a creation crystal, Kingpin, Golden Queen, and the game. Now, you might realize that uh, there is no portal included in this version of the game, and that's because Skyland has summoned into this game via the Joy-Cons. Uh, the Joy-Cons freed for NFC chips within, within the Skylanders, and then it's stored in the digital library for the Switch, so you can have up to 300 characters, I believe, and this saves you need to carry a portal around everywhere, so it definitely makes the game a whole lot more portable, which is what the, the Switch both, of course, for AO, that's, of course, what they aim for with the Switch version, considering the Switch is both a home and a um, portable console. So yes, they definitely um, nailed it on that behalf. Um, you know, taking uh, advantage of the Switch's capabilities, that's what I mean by that right here. But of course we have our beautiful Skylanders Imaginators logo up top. And running around the side here is of course the Nintendo Switch logo looking all glorious. And you also get, of course, the collection poster inside it as well as the sticker sheet. And um, here is basically just telling you how uh, the figures work in the game. Okay, so... Here we have the back, lots of exciting stuff happening here. So let's start off with the left side of the box. So of course we have the fact that you can create your own Skylanders Imaginators, give them your own personality, and even select your battle class, weapons and gear, and train them with Sensei, so that's awesome. Truly unleash your imagination with, of course, the infinite possibilities. And here we have the book, Bring Skylanders to Life with the Classic 1, 2, 3. Uh, for the Classic 1, 2, 3, or Sky, uh, Skylanders fans all know and love. And then we've also got um, the creation process. So we've got one, selecting so battle class, two, creating your imagination, and free playing them in the game and so that's basically all the features and fun stuff and then over here um it's basically advertisement game pretty much because you know you've got to make the game look promising if you actually want people to buy it that is so you can embark on a new mystical adventure battle save scans unleash the sensei sky she powers play with friends and even conquer all new side quests and mini games i know my reader makes the game sound so epic and that's because it is but either way, of course, down here you have more characters uh, to that you can collect. So, of course, you have Master Kingpin, who's available in this here starter pack. And then you also have Master Starcast, Master Ambush, Master Chopscotch, Master Barbella, and Master Airstrike. And then over here you have the villains. So we have Golden Queen, Wolfgang, Dr. Crankcase, Chop... Chalky Mage, who I still don't have yet, which is annoying. Tycoon Crow and Hunskull, who I still also do not have. And so, yes, um, here we have all of the... Um, different names and fall from the game and stuff and of course down here we have uh, the number of players that this uh, particular game allows for so yeah you can have one to two on the tv one to two on joy cons and only one when your switch is in like wii u mode i call it when it looks just like your gamepad a pretty much portable gamepad that's what switch is but i got no problems with that because wii u was great and then the switch expanded upon that and made it even greater of an idea by the way, um, some toys don't work in this game. Um, vehicles, for example, do not work because they took out the entirety of a racing in this uh, port right here. And then neither do the traps work either because, of course, the Joy-Cons cannot read the traps. But every other toy does work in this game, so that is indeed a great to say the least. And then um, down here is basically just saying why this game is Peggy 7 with its violence and fear, even though it's probably the most unviolent and unmost fearful game ever. <laughs> But anyway, that's, that pretty much does it for the box, so now it's time for the exciting part, the actual 
unbox. And so as you can see, you've got a tag at the top right here that was basically just made for um, portability. It helped me carry it around town because basically when I bought it in town, it didn't fit inside my bag, so I had to carry it around everywhere. But luckily, that tag made things a whole lot easier for me. So I'm glad that was there, but either way, let's start with the sticker here. So we're going to shop right into that with my trusty scissors. One second. Uh, Get things all set up you guys. There we go, that's a much better way of doing things right there. And remember, be careful when you're using scissors at home. Don't cut yourselves. Okay, so we're going to get right into this here. Hopefully you guys can see all of this all right. I'm sorry for you guys that can hear this. I know how painful it can be. Come on. Again, I apologise for that. I know how painful that can be, but I've waited as that part sorted. And then there is the box also. So yes, that box does indeed look great. We're going to seal it up and then I can uh, keep that, of course, because I love keeping all of the start pack and boxes, uh, pretty much. And as for a tag, I'm going to leave it on there. That is if I can actually find a way to close this thing. I don't think that's how you close it, we're just going to stick with that for now, because uh, now we get to move on to the main event, which is of course the characters and the game itself. So yeah, let's get into it, shall we? Starting off with Golden Queen, hopefully you guys won't hit the plastic too much. You guys probably going to hit the plastic too much, it's going to be annoying. Warning headphone users. Why am I giving you for warning after punishment? It's silly of me, I suppose. Okay, there we go, that's Golden Queen out, looking very, very cool. So next up is the Fire Creation Crystal, which luckily is very easy to take out. It makes very little noise, fortunately. <laughs> right when I say that, I struggle to get it out and make a lot of noise while doing it. Okay, there we go. And last but not least, we have Kingpin, or in terms of the characters anyway, in terms of the actual starter pack, we got much more. Oh, and wow, it turns out Kingpin was the easiest thing to take out. <laughs> find that uh, funny, I suppose. But anyway, of course, that's not all what the plastic has to offer, because right back here we've got the poster, the stickers, and all that fun stuff, which we're just about to explore. Once I can actually get this thing loose, that is. Oh, wait, no, hold on, I found it. Okay, let's grab my scissors once again. Whatever it is, I didn't know. There they are. Okay, we're going to chop that off, and boom, we're going to chop that off. Nice. That works much easier, so let's get let's get removing that right now. And let's be taking this bit off right here. Oh. This is less than ideal, guys, I will admit. Okay, let's chop that off, and let's chop this off also. Nice job, me. So let's get straight into this uh, plastic wallet part for video, and then of course we can get into the most exciting part, in my opinion, which is of course the game. Oh, accidentally dropped the stickers alongside that. Okay. So here are the stickers. This sticker is basically for your creation crystal, so you can then um, go ahead and place one of the battle classes at the back of the creation crystal, so then you can remember which imaginator is which, because of course I have two of the same uh, crystal now. So the only way I'm going to be able to, to distinguish between the two is the sticker on the back. So I'm also going to remove this stuff of a box, because I love um, keeping my boxes in good, good tip-top shape uh, for the box art. Okay, there's that taken off, and now we've got the last part to take off right here at the top. And then the box will pretty much be sorted, but hey, the box is only so exciting when you've got the game inside to look even more forward to. But we're not going to get into the game just yet, because we have other things to look forward to, such as, of course, the poster. Which I can guarantee you guys is going to look awesome if I can open it without ripping it, which knowing my look probably ain't going to happen. Boom. Oh, sorry, not the camera there, guys. And boom. Yep, just ripped it, guys. You probably heard it. R.I.P. my poster. R.I.P. it. I'm telling you. Wow, 
Right, this part over burn. All burn without a limp in. There's always this one part right next to Mr. Cat right here and everyone wants to open up out of rip. Do you guys see that? I know it's well annoying, right? But either way, that, my friends, is one hell of a poster right there. As you can see, it's awesome. Oh, and these um, slots at the bottom right here, this is where you can take the bottom part of your uh, fire creation crystal sticker. So this bottom part right here, you can name it. So you can grab a pen, put your name for your imaginator on, and you can put it at the bottom of the poster right here. So then you have your names of all your imaginators on the poster. So yeah, that is indeed a cool addition and a cool poster indeed. By the way, now we're going to roll it back up. Hopefully it won't fail it too much this time. That won't as much of a fail, so I'll take it. We will take that. We take those. Oh, and you guys can see I just took it on the bed right there. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Actually, you can think if you can see all the other junk that's piled up on my bed. Just a bunch of my Switch stuff, but either way, uh, so yeah. Here is, of course, the game, the stickers, and the characters, aka the best part of the starter pack. So now let's open this game up. Boom. Okay, so first of all, we have, of course, an advertisement for Skyness Academy. That was the same with every single um, version of the game. And right here, you have a cartridge, and as you can see, the cartridge is tiny. A tiny, small little cartridge. Let's see if we can make out the details on that. Because, yeah, basically what it is, is it's basically got the game logo on it. And it's got Activision on it, so it's, of course, got Nintendo Switch at the top. It's got Imaginators in the middle, and then the publisher and all the other things to do with the game underneath it. And then the back is also quite self-explanatory. It, of course, has uh, the little chips right here which is of course how uh, the switch would read the game so yeah plenty of stuff to be excited by right there so let's see if i can set this up cool in a cool way okay there we go that's totally cool that does it for this uh, switch unboxing there you guys probably have so many questions right now like first of all why the hell was there a nintendo switch unboxing for the starter pack of this game to start off this video well that's uh, simply because well that ex uh, this is not only going to explain the uh, intro to the video but it's also going to explain the new code setup so basically i recorded this episode back when i was recording for the rest of the uh, let's play i can't even remember when that was it was so long ago but regardless what happened is that after i had finished uh, editing this particular episode the data actually got corrupt so basically i lost this entire episode so um we need to redo this entire episode is what i'm saying here and so i've come back to re-record it now but the problem is is that i was going to do this much more earlier but i've never actually had a the storage capacity to do it because basically that original let's play that i've done uh used my original phone but of course that phone got damaged so I had to get a replacement phone which had nowhere near as much storage as that previous phone had, hence I couldn't go back to re-record this. But now with my much newer phone I have um, no more storage problems, storage problems are a thing for past for me even, meaning that I can indeed come back and re-record this episode and of course it gives me opportunity for this new setup here as I'm currently using for Nintendo Switch to re-record this rather than my Wii U. And so, of course, um, that's why we have a Nintendo Switch starter pack at the beginning of the video as well, because that's the version of the game that I'm currently using to record, re-record this episode. But regardless, we're going to waste no more time. Explanations out of the way. Let's get to uh, the card shack right here. You're just in time for the Big Skystone's Creation Clash Tournament! Great, can't wait to win this. Because, yeah, as we learned in the previous episode, of course, we need to go and speak to uh, Baron von Shellshock to get the location of the Golden Arcade where uh, Chaos is heading out to next. And yes, I am still on Nightmare Mode, guys. The difficulty has not changed at all. But the problem with this particular episode that we're about... Uh, not episode, uh, chapter that we're about to head out for is the fact that there's one area which is completely inaccessible until we get an accessory from a later level. So basically, I'm going to play through this level and get as many stars as possible. And then we're going to have to revisit this uh, level later on in the Let's Play in order to get that last area found. So we'll start off with for two stars, the first and the third one, and then we'll have to come back here for the middle star afterward. But regardless, well, 
Hi. You got here just in time for the big tournament. Head inside to take on our resident champ. Oh, that's good. That's exactly who I needed to be as well. But as I was saying, yeah, let's get into this. No more interruptions now. Time to win. Now, another interesting thing is that, uh, of course, since this is recorded many months after that, after those initial uh, episodes were recorded, I now have new characters, such as Chain Reaction here. But what's unfortunate is that because I've had the entire Let's Play recorded this whole time, this is going to be the only episode where you see Chain Reaction in, purely because of the fact that, as I said before, um, I've got him in between the uh, Let's Play episodes, so... Yeah, he's not exactly going to be seen from here on out, unfortunately, because of the weird way how this has been recorded. And what are those orb things? This is, like, my second time using this guy. Hello, indeed. But yeah, I am going to return to this game eventually once I get all the adventure packs. And I'm, of course, going to go through the adventure packs, which I'm going to need to re-record at a later date as well. So you'll see Chain Reaction for those. But the point is, after this episode, until those adventure packs again, you're not going to see characters like Chain Reaction or Pit Boss appear again. Because I've got Pit Boss recently as well. Okay, uh, let's bring in... Hmm... I'm trying to think of a good move here. Like, no matter what move I do, the chances are he's going to take the stone, so I may as well just play this right here. And I've also got great follow up clips, I think, for it. I've got so many new characters since uh, I recorded those original Let's Play episodes. So, uh, next up, we shall go for. Yeah, let's go with Bear Strike, why not? Good luck taking this back, because it ain't gonna happen. Hmm, no matter what I do, they're going to be able to take that stone back. Same with uh, book sh uh, Bookshot, unfortunately, so I'm going to have to take it. But I'm kind of hoping this can set up Pit Boss so I can take it. Well, Wolfgang also works because that's we can... Wait, hold on a minute. If I take a Bookshot, it's just going to take Bookshot right back. But then again, that doesn't even matter because if we take Wolfgang then, um, you know, we never took Bookshot to begin with, so he can't gain his, uh, any extra score, so we've already beat him, is basically what I'm saying here. So there was strategy to what I was doing, but there's no need for strategy, because I won anyways. Yes, I am a brilliant player. Of course I'm ready for the Golden Arcade. This is what I came to you for before, bro. Yeah, you soak you, and I'm going to saw you up, because the saw is the law and all. That's this guy's catchphrase, in case you missed it before. Ooh, tables. <laughs> Let's destroy those. After all, saws make good uh, demolition objects, especially for wood and all. Well, that's what saws are for, for the most part. Oh, yeah, and this guy also has this awesome attack right here. I'm a huge fan of that attack. Eh, eh. Shut up, guys. That was hilarious. But yeah, I'm just getting gold for this guy, so then I can upgrade him uh, later on, of course. And I'm sorry if you guys hear some knocking. My dad's just doing some uh, hammering downstairs. But it should pick up. My mic is good enough for that. So we're going to get an exit for card jack and then head out for the Golden Arcade, where I have C la exact location from, from C Baron von Shellshock. Man, my Baron von Shellshock uh, voice sucks. I know one voice and imper um, impersonation I am never doing again, and that's that Baron von Shellshock one, alright? But regardless, let's get into this. <sighs> well, once the loading screen finishes. That's one thing, for Nintendo Switch might have, um... The Nintendo Switch might be more powerful than the Wii U, or at least when it's docked it might be, but that doesn't mean it has much shorter loading screens. The thing is, is the interesting fact about the Nintendo Switch, if you actually have your Joy-Cons detached from the Switch whilst your Switch is docked, then the loading screens actually take less time. So that's what I just did, I just detached my Joy-Cons from my main Switch whilst it's been docked right here. Oh, and there's a Sensei Tigral over there, which Chain Reaction could uh, access if we wanted him to. But I don't want him to, because that's not the current aim of this uh, video. In fact, that's actually going to be a later video. But regardless, let's uh, head back up for this right here. The Golden Arcade, our objective at hand, of course. Let us enter without further ado. Ado? 
Man, I really am going crazy. But then again, who said there was ever anything wrong with crazy? I know I ain't saying that for sure. And then there's also the tech creation crystal. Ironic how that pops up when we're using a tech sensei. Although Tin Reaction is one of the senseis that never actually got a dual pack. In fact, I think only the villains ever got dual packs. Because I remember Pain Yarda got a dual pack with Magic Creation Crystal. As did uh, Dr. Crankcase, Wolfgang. And um, Pain Yarda, Dr. Crankcase, Wolfgang. And actually, that's it for the dual packs. So it was really only villains uh, and Creation Crystal dual packs. Oh boy, here comes this fool. You a bear, bouncer. As you're about to see from his uh, villain intro, or his enemy intro even. <laughs> what a hypocrite. I was about to say, what a hypocrite then, because he laughed when someone else was being tossed, not himself. But he did actually laugh at, uh, laugh at himself being tossed, so it wasn't such a hypocrite at all. Yeah, that looks real great, all right. <laughs> we got a wolf gang and four female trigger happies. That's not weird at all. Yeah, because that's how stuff works. But regardless, we're not going to play this chain reaction right here because the chances are I'm going to die and I do not want that. So instead, we're going to go with a uh, legendary bounce. So that seems fitting, right? I mean, like, you can own, uh, you really, you can only defeat a bad bouncer with an actual bouncer. And since this is the golden arcade, we may as well have the bouncer with a golden color scheme, that being the legendary version, of course. What don't you hate? Well, that's why he is a bad bouncer, but we all know what happens to the bad guys. They get shot by the good ones. Cause you know, good guys can never lose. Unless it's Infinity Ward and good guys can most certainly lose, like really, really badly in fact. How dare you take out the rat? That's right, this is the only time where I actually care about the rats. But yeah, let's try to finish this guy off, shall we? Or at least that's the uh, plan, mind you. Okay, let's get the hell out of the way there. Okay, let's try to finish this guy off, or at least get on the start to it. Take my fists, you! Ha ha ha! I like my good old robotic fists and all. No, not another rat, dude! How dare you kill off my latch dudes! Not cool of you, sir, not cool at all. Take that, sucker. In fact, heavens the owner of the area is tech, though, because without that, uh, this would most certainly be much more of a pain. At least much more of a pain than what it is right now. So lucky, though, that guy is nice and easy to evade, like, um, he's slow. He might be powerful, but he's slow. Yeah, Trick Happy's got quite the character, all right? And by quite the character, I mean he's a bit... Crazy, not messed up, just crazy. Okay, let's be uh, heading to that cannon then. Because that is one good looking cannon, you've got to admit. So, yeah, let's shoot some stuff, aka my favourite activity. Well, I say it's my favourite activity, it most certainly ain't because I definitely prefer fighting in this game over shooting because this game has such a great combat system. Just like every single Sky game, like that's one thing every Sky game gets right for combat and everything. And that's what makes the combat in Sky so fun, the fact that it's always that fleshed out. Then again, they have a combat system nailed on the first game, so they just really need to port it over. And in doing so, they've never actually messed it up, so that's great. Oh shoot, I just remembered what I forgot. I forgot to shoot this thing down, didn't I? That's a bit crappy. <laughs> Oops. Uh, that was a mistake. It's fine, we can come back uh, to the very beginning of that level and sort it out in a bit. 
basically I always make the same mistake when coming through this level and I always forget to shoot that backboard right there because basically behind that backboard is a treasure chest so how the hell I always make that same mistake over and over again I don't even know like seriously you think I'd learn from my mistakes but apparently not okay you gotta love that musical number right now yeah, definitely tip your waiter. Your waiter is well worth uh, tipping. But one thing I want to know is how come there isn't actually anyone in the audience at this point? Oh, no, no, we can see, mind you. Look, 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 right there, there's no one there. So where is our animal paws coming from anyways? Told you it was uh, Wolfgang, uh, some good version of Wolfgang, weirdly, and some uh, female trick have all right. Wait, no, that ain't no Wolfgang. I'm sure we're about to find out who it is, don't we? Who didn't Wolfgang play with and who didn't Wolfgang backstab? He played with Pop Viz at one point and he stabbed him in the back, as we know from, of course, Skarn's Academy. Well, luckily, I already have both of those, so I don't really need to be here. But we're going to be here anyway, because we're good like that. Yes, that's exactly what we're here for. Don't think so. We'll prove ourselves as players, we shall do. Just point me to where my task is, and I shall do it, basically speaking. Yes, I am. I'm, I'm, I'm more than pretty good, I'd say. Ha ha ha. So wait, we have a bad bouncer that's a good bouncer? How can we have a bad bouncer that's a good bouncer when all the bad bouncers are bad bouncers? I mean, like, it's my good bouncer against the good bad bouncer, so that's so many good bouncers that I'm losing track of all the bad bouncers because they don't seem too bad anymore with a good bad bouncer on the scene. <laughs> Try to say what I said five times faster. Try tip. Try tip, eh? Well, you're going down, Try tip. You're going down. Or I could just press the wrong button, you know. This is not the Xbox 360, people, so I'm getting the control scheme mixed up with the Xbox 360 here. But hey, that's kind of normal come this point. I'm sure you guys have gotten used to that from me. Right on. Right on. How dare you, man. How dare you, dare you, dare you. Face the might of my Blastatron. Oh, my newest character. Okay, let's uh, take this dude down. In fact, no, it doesn't matter who we uh, use here. We could use flipping uh, Sarkas because the other stones can't take it because they don't have a blade to the right. That was well placed though, I don't have a bottom blade so they can't take any of my stones. But hey, the Funus Mutual because he can't take mine, again. So just, so just like that I have won 6 to 3. Which of course is the equivalent of um, 2 to 3, so I beat them 2 to 3, but we are. Not bad means good, right? Because good is not good is what not bad is. <laughs> All these wise words of mine, honestly, I'm, I'm making you for more wise of thought of her for it. But clearly, I've got to be careful as well because you can't be too wise like me and all. Because if you're too wise, your brain explodes all the time, kind of like mine did before when I was talking about the bouncers and everything. That's what I call a brain explosion. Oh, hi, little snail dude. Let's collect the snail dude bits. And by bits, I mean uh, imaginite bits or whatever or whatnot. You see what I mean? I'm so wise. I'm literally turning myself to be crazy right here. I'm turning into quite a character, kind of like what Trick, trick Happy was, as, as I was alluding to before. they got some new legs, wrapped up legs, because now that I'm playing on my Switch, I don't have all the parts unlocked, unlike on my Wii U. Ouch, that hurt, meanie. Okay, let's, uh, yeah, let's get spinning, just as he said right now. Oh, man, I missed that. <laughs> let's just pretend that didn't happen, guys. Shh, shh, shh. You see what I mean? It never happened. Shh, still. 
Okay, so there's actually a nice little minigame here. And, you know, what kind of arcade would it be without a minigame at all? So let's play that minigame. No, I think I'd prefer the prize, bro. So basically, let's get into this arcade machine and get the high score. So basically, this is an infinite game. It continues until you lose. So I'm basically just here to beat the high score. I'm not going to go much further than that. I do actually really quite like this, uh, this sprocket game. Okay, here we go. So basically, you've got to go through these areas right here, take down enemy tanks, uh, and take down all of their bases before they take down your base. Although this thing does seem to get a little bit jammed sometimes for some weird and strange, uh, weird and strange reasons, which slow down your tank, which is not uh, great, mind you. Haha, -ha, take that, I got uh, super fast rate bullets. Tank man, come on, don't get jammed up like that. Yeah, the controls for this aren't particularly brilliant. It seems like this is one bad port, uh, part of the port to the Switch, because basically, the Switch is my preferred port. I'll take the Switch port over for Wii U port any day, but basically, this mini game ain't so great on the Switch, as you can tell. Like, I don't know why the controls get jammed up like that. Come on, Sprocket Man, move here, come on. Oh, you don't want to continue and press the wrong buttons here again. Oh, what do you know? That actually worked. Oh, never mind, I take it back. It definitely didn't. Oh no, now we've got those guys attacking our base. So basically you lose when your base is destroyed. So don't let that happen. I kind of want to get the high score before I lose. So uh, let's take these dudes down. Before my base is entirely annihilated. Oh, here's some dude that wants uh, to die. So kill them I shall. Oh, and then there's also hearts. Hearts do the obvious thing. Like uh, heal you. Like what else do hearts do, right? Especially if it's an obvious thing and all. I just kind of wish that the controls weren't so jammed up right now. Or at least the movement, anyway. Less so the controls. But yeah, basically, this is a free arcade machine. If only arcades were just decent in real life to have free machines like this that were so decent. Because no arcades are just one large uh, cash grab. If you want to waste your money, go to the arcades, basically. But do I care? No, because they're actually pretty damn fun. I'm trying to listen out there to see if the alarm from my uh, from my base was going off, but I couldn't hear it, so let's just hope that it wasn't. Okay, there we go. There's that base all destroyed and everything. So now we've got one last base to defeat, and then we get to move on to the next level. If Sprocket can actually move, that is, which it seems like she can't, so that's most unfortunate. There is a heart there, but we're not going to worry about that just yet. Because all we need to worry about is getting to that base. Yeah, for some reason, when you're, like, going in a direction that goes against the direction of your treads, you go faster. That makes, like, no sense whatsoever. Okay, let's finish that off. Boom, you can consider it finished. Here we go. Luckily, though, we're about done with this, so not too much more longer. With getting the high score by that, I mean, of course. Got to get that high score and all. And I just realised that someone popped up online on my uh, Switch play Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Who plays Mario Kart anymore? Kidding, of course. But yeah, let's be uh, shooting this thing right here because I want to. And you know, if you want to do something, that's a pretty reasonable reason for doing it. But just like that, we have got the high score. So it's about time for me to quit out of that and claim my prize. So here's a prize and my respect. Now, it's true, you cannot see respect, so when someone says you have their respect, you're just going to have to trust them on it. Oh, the Wrenchinator, I remember that from the first ever troll that was introduced to in Skarnel's Sparrow's Adventure. But regardless, we're swapping from one tech Skarnel to another because I want to swap back for Chain Reaction right here, getting some gold, hopefully we can upgrade him from there. So let's be playing some uh, more mini games because I like my mini games and all. Noob tested, not cool. I am no noob. I'm gonna skip you because I've lost all my respect for you for calling this for calling this for noob testing area. And, uh, effectively, um, calling me a noob. And I'm sorry about that, guys. I kind of lost track of what I was saying because I did a little miniature burp, which I'm not sure if that picked up on camera or not. 
so what I'm going to give to you guys for that is my apologies, but hopefully that is enough as it is. How dare you hurt the egg? No one hurts the eggs but me. And just like that, the egg has been rescued. And we got, like, one piece of gold. But hey, one piece of gold is still one piece of gold closer to every upgrade, so I will take that, mind you. But yeah, let's shoot some ducks. I like shooting ducks. Oh yeah, before I forget, let's actually shoot this thing. Because, you know, before I forgot to shoot the back of a wall from the treasure chest, I'm not going to forget to shoot that as well. Oh, come on. Not that silly. That's exactly what it's like, Sal. But yeah, it is a bit easy for me. I mean, like, it is called a new testing area, so you're testing me to be a noob when I'm nowhere near being a noob, in fact. Guess that was a little easy, huh? Indeed. Start somewhere. I started there like five million times. Because of course I played this level so many times purely because it seems to be the fan favourite level. This one, I found it out from my streams personally. Okay, let's take this down. Actually, it definitely isn't, come to think of it, considering that, like I said before, I've done this level so many times. But hey, I don't blame people for this being their favourite level of the game. This is my personal favourite level of the game, because it's the only one with any sort of creativity to it. And just like that, we got ourselves a Smasher Ladder Marisol frame. So what you can do is you can stay in here just infinitely to collect all this gold right here. But, you know, we, we've got ourselves an upgrade, so we're just going to uh, get out of here with what we have because we've actually got our uh, special ability now, which uh, allows us to... Oh wait, no, that wasn't our special ability. This is what we got, our holding ability, which is pretty cool in all fairness. Man, I just spazzed out like crazy right there. Man, that's gonna be so fun to do if it's gonna do that from now on. This is why a chainsaw guy is an awesome guy. Like, even his beard is made of chainsaw, so that's how awesome this Sawnator is. I love, I love the way how I add Nator at the end of everything, and I think it sounds cool when it really don't. And if that's, we shall get to in a momento. But as for now, what we actually want to get into is this. A selfie with your boy, Trigger Happy. Now that is one great selfie, my friend. And I'll tell you what, Chain Reaction has the best smile of any sensei. That is one awesome smile of his. And then there's also this. You guys remember these from Superchargers? I know I do. But the only difference with this is that this one's guaranteed money. Give me money, 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 money. Give me money, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, money is all I care about. I was going to originally do some sort of tune with that, but I completely forgot what the tune I was going for was going to be. So, hence, I didn't actually do any sort of tune with that. Lost potential, sure, but uh, I have no potential to begin with, so there's no, none of the, uh, none of it to be lost when it comes to me. <laughs> and, uh, and again, I'm laughing at my own jokes. That is the uh, first sign of lameness, laughing at your own jokes and all. And you know jokes are bad as well when not only you laugh at your own jokes, when your own jokes are literally about you burning yourself. But hey, I'm, I'm Ignite the Fire. i got to burn something, so if that's myself, then bring it. Okay, so let's be collecting some more Marginite whilst we are at it. Because you know I want that bonus and all. You guys know how much I want that bonus, because I like bonuses. Okay, let's hope we can gain ourselves some experience whilst we're in this area. Oh, and that uh, little area I was alluding to before that you can't actually reach without having a certain accessory. Basically, I'm going to show you here once, uh, show you it here once. Sal, shut up! Although the chances of that occurring are very slim come this point. So basically, what you, uh, what there is, is there's some dragon wings, which we get later on in the game. So basically, you can't access that level without those dragon wings. So we're going to have to come back here once we've unlocked those dragon wings. Yeah, I'm taking you down, dude. You ain't winning that easily. At least not against chain reaction, you ain't. But man, why there so many of these things around, man? Like, does there need to be this many thingies around? Yeah, this guy is actually pretty good for the combos, so you got to admit. Yeah, this 
guy doesn't do much damage, as you can tell, but he does uh, it in like lots of chokes. So he does small amount of damage in quick amount of time. So I will take that, mind you. Powerful enough for me, is basically what I'm saying here. Ha ha, sucker. Oh, nice, and we even leveled up, which is also great. But we also died, which is not so great. So we are going to remove this instant scar, and it looks like we're going to have to um, get that middle star some other time as well as that. Um, well, we had to come back here to get the all areas found anyway, so we'll just get the no life lost objective once I come back to do that. But regardless, um, and then we also need to get that last um, objective at some point as well, because we missed the very first treasure chest of a level. But we're just going to go with my boy here, because who else what should I go with, right? I would say nice try, sucker, but it wasn't. Okay, so we're going to need to wait uh, to beat that Sky Terms game before we can uh, finish off with that. So for now, we're basically just going to continue on with the level and uh, see what we can do with it, basically speaking. Now there are some stuff we can blow up, so let's blow it up without further ado, shall we? Like this, my friends, is one of the very chests I was alluding to before. But if we are going to change our scar into a character who both needs more experience and more gold, so I suppose a perfect character for that would be none of them pit boss once we get around to him. But again, I'm pretty sure this is one of my new characters, so you're probably not going to see him much throughout this entire Let's Play, most unfortunately for you guys. But hey, at least I can show him off while I have him, right? I can't even remember if this guy has all of his upgrades yet or not. I'm sure we're about to find out now. Nope, he definitely does not. So we're going to save up for that uh, soldier ability, actually. That seems like it would be the wisest decision for me to make. Boom! Just like that, the chest has been opened. Remember, kids, gamble responsibly. Which this level is like, it's the complete opposite of what this, uh, what the message behind this level is. Which to me I find kind of hilarious, but probably that's just me. Again, most probably. How dare you hit me? That was rude, bruv. Okay, there we go. That's that guy all sorted. So let's grab ourselves another one of these. Because I like blowing stuff up. Kind of got the same ideology as some other uh, demolitions expert I know, aka Boomer. So let's blow, uh, let's sort out this thing whilst we wait for that to be blown up. Yeah, basically you just gotta keep spinning, just keep spinning, and then you'll eventually get to it. Like so. And nice, we do officially have enough of that oh, upgrade now. Now, one thing I do miss from this game is. Um, for Wing Sapphires. I really wish Wing Sapphires was still in this game so then upgrades could be made more cheaply and all that. But I do love the fact that this uses symbols from the original Sky and Spires Adventure Portal, so you know that's kind of a nice callback. And one of them, aka the uh, one at approximately um, 100 degrees, yeah, that one I just hit at the end there, looks just like Drobot's head to me, so you know that's what makes the interest symbol all the more interesting for me personally. Oh, I don't want to get you, I want to get you. Release A while coiled in slivering soul snake to unleash a giant and dead snake. Sounds exciting indeed. So yeah, before we get to that uh, soul gem game, uh, not soul gem game there. Um, before we get to that sky stones game or creation clash game, whatever it's called, we're going to check out that soldier ability, if you know it even lets us. Yeah, I have no idea how to activate that soldier ability. I'm going to need to read that again. How silly of me. Release A while coiled in slivering soul to... Uh, sliv slivering soul snake, even, to re uh, unleash a giant and dead snake. Okay, fair enough then. Yeah, I don't know how soul gem abilities work apparently, so we're just going to uh, stop embarrassing myself and just get to the creation clash without further ado. 
It's the same slightly creation clashes for anything I'm good at without embarrassing myself, but even then I embarrassed myself with a creation clash because I called it Skystones like twice before. And it basically is Skystones, just with Sensei's own playing, more or less. Aurora's going down. Yeah, yeah? Mm hmm? Okay, this is going right here. I'm kind of hoping Wildstorm will take it from the top. Or, you know, Bookshot could just take it and go completely against my plan altogether. So this game is kind of doomed already. Hmm. I'm going to play you here because I know you can't take it if I do that. Now we're going to play you right there. And then we're going to have you play Crash Bandicoot in the top right corner, which will result in my victory, because 5 to 4 is more on my behalf. He'll be back. I really wish he said that in an Ornall Schwarzenegger voice. That would have been an awesome addition. But never mind, this game ain't that detailed and all. But yeah, this is what I get uh, for playing a Skarner near enough brand new out of the box. In a uh, nightmare mode scenario, I get defeated, and I'm all about uh, chain reaction from early, by the way. Pit boss, push for dang thing! Hey there, guys, it's Ignite the Fire here. Welcome back to a brand new episode of Glitchlanders. So, today as Glitch, we're looking at Pit Boss and the impossible uh, block push. I love way to how I reference uh, Sky Glitchlanders, and yet, um, when it comes to this Let's Play, and the time when I recorded it, when I recorded this Let's Play initially, um, Sky Glitchlanders wouldn't have even been a concept to me yet. <laughs> that just goes to show how crazy time can get. Okay, I'm looking right now for uh, Chompy Mage. I'm pretty sure it's at the very end, though, which is unfortunate. Here he is, exactly the person I was looking for. Jingle Bells, Chompy Mage, the Sorcerer. After all, he's got a strap on his figure. Oh, wait, never mind. Turns out he's a bazooka and all. But yeah, I'm glad I recorded a little intro for uh, Sky Glitch Landers because now I have that for whenever I need it, and what? It's still not pushing. I thought moving into the Chain of Skarners would make it be pushed, but for some reason it's not pushing. I think it's because this pushes in the way. That's exactly why I didn't push. Well, now at least I know why the glitch works, and at least now I have footage for Glitch Landers whenever I need it. Because basically, that thing won't push if there's a push in front of it for some strange reason. It's probably because, you know, the pushies have uh, collision detection and they can't push for anything with collision detection. It's interesting enough for me is what I'm saying here. Oh yeah, I love it when Chucky Mage is in the house and all. Get in the house! Light element is strong on this zone. Well, guess what? I just do not care. Well, I say I don't care. I'm going to swap out for a light scanner anyway, purely because I can. Because another new scanner I got recently is Spotlight. Man, why am I making it so confusing in terms of what characters I do and do not have in uh, consistency to the rest of the Let's Play? Because, again, this is another scanner which I'm not going to have for the rest of the Let's Play. Because when I recorded this initial Let's Play, I did not have her. Well, luckily that's been all sorted out, so that's fortunate enough as it is. Triple thumbs up! That's probably how many thumbs up this video is going to get known in my look. And if that's the case, thank you so much for that, guys. Because that would be a coincidence. Oh, wait, I'm going to open you up. <laughs> did I need the evil laugh afterwards? Yes, yes I did. That's the answer to that question right now. And there's also a orb thingy right here, which will help us level up. Almost twice, in fact. But almost doesn't count now, does it? And that's a sad, sad a, a reality of the situation. I know, right? It's sad. So regardless, let's uh, grab Pena a soldier, and whilst we are here. And we're going to prove your pain in yada. It's a whole lot of pain in a yada. And I love that music, though. That music is classic. At least when it comes to this franchise, anyway. 
So let's get back and reach the final challenge as the objectives would uh, have it implied. Now there is a selfie spot right here, so we're going to do that very quickly whilst we uh, <laughs> wait for this to finish. Okay, that's an awesome selfie right there with the TNT behind her and everything. But just remember to walk away real slow during the explosion. It always looks cool. Slow walk away. Whoa. You gotta love that cliche though. I mean, like, it's a pretty big cliche, sure, but it's a pretty cool cliche, at least in terms of its visuals, mind you. Yay, we have more friends. Exactly what I needed. Not really, but hey, at least light is currently the element of the area, so we're gonna get, like, additional uh, power against them. And additional experience as well, it would seem. Cursed you cause for being so nerf in this game, though. By the way, we're about to get another soul gem. Like, all of the soul gems in this level are within the vicinity of, like, five minutes of each other. And one of them is actually a really ironic soul gem. I'm not looking forward to getting to that because of the irony of the irony. I don't love the way how we're, like, five blocks away from that explosion before it even gets initiated because we're just so cool like that and all. So just like that, we're going to blow up what we're meant to blow up. Because we like blowing stuff up. We blow everything up. That's how things go. And we even got another level up. I would say that bright, but pretty bright, all right? Besides, wouldn't you associate the sun with more of a fire-based um, element? Mostly because, you know, there are lots of fire starters with some basic abilities, like Hothead, uh, Smolder Dash, and Ember, for example. But then there's also the fact that the sun is made out of fire, literally. Like, the sun is made, uh, the sun is created from combustion of hydrogen and helium. And combustion is fire, so, you know. <laughs> but either way, here's what's so ironic about the last soul gem. Basically, the last soul gem is chain reactions. So it's awesome to see his soul gem. It's also sad to know that I got the soul gem for Skana, which I just lost in the walkthrough right here. Hang heavens, this ain't no lock go. Because, you know, chain reaction looks pretty bad, but in a good way. So, uh, definitely looking forward to upgrading him some more. And by bad, I mean badass. That's why I meant it in a good way and all. Not Candy Cake Jump Bum Drop Land. That sounds like the worst arcade cabinet machine thingy ever. Oh, and by the way, um, as for the rest of the Let's Play is pre-recorded, basically, uh, the episode is up to the finale. I not only recorded my Wii U, but basically, uh, because of that, you know, after this episode, we'll be going back to my 100% profile and all that is what I'm saying here. Which is why I'm going to 100% 100 this particular level on this quick run through here and then afterwards like we'll get back to the profile with all of the 100% uh, already sorted out and all the other levels and all. Although the unfortunate part is is that I'm still not going to have 100% on this game just yet because I need to, uh, to complete the adventure pack levels for that first. Oh boy, did it have to be you? Like couldn't it be anyone but you? Luckily, though, uh, Spotlight has been an absolute badass, as she is, with her sonic rings and all. Yes, I still think they are sonic rings. Because they are, look at them, they are clearly sonic rings right here. Look at them and tell me that they don't remind you of Sonic. The answer is, that is impossible, my friends. It's just as impossible as a recipe for guilt-free brownies, according to Mags. Ouch, that hurts, like, a lot. But we're not too worried about losing any Skarners anymore, considering that we did lose Chain Reaction earlier. Plus, it's not a lock either, so... No pressure. Now, this dude just really needs to hurry up and die already because he's really starting to get my nerves right here. Oh, now that, my friends, really did hurt. Okay, hopefully this guy doesn't have too much more longer till he's defeated. Now, where's that other... Oh, there are a few bullets. Basically, one hit and I'm done for, so that's why I'm trying to avoid being hit at all costs, more or less. Luckily, though, by the time this guy's uh, finished off, I should uh, level up. Level up. 
Level me up, please. Okay, maybe not then. But yeah, this guy can take some hits, just saying. Oh, yes, we got him. And we leveled up, just as I said we would, because I'm great at predicting and stuff like that and all. Now, here's a candy gun drop thingy from Candy Gun Drop Land, or whatever the na name of this game was. Basically, what I'm saying here is that this game has a habit of being kind of lame. Okay, bounce, boy, bounce. Oh, yeah. That went in the complete opposite direction of where I meant, meant, uh, meant for it to go, but I don't really care too much, in all fairness. Like, I'm really that induced in this game right here. Although, it would be nice to kind of get up there, I will admit. There we go. Got up there eventually, guys, and that's what matters. Although, the best part of this game is definitely the music by a long shot. But imagine if we had to sit through this game until we got that high score just to win. That, my friends, would be a nuisance. I do think I could play this game for that long and all. Oh no, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna watch it, no! Um, we are on a video game, should I tell him, guys? I love the way how we're fighting a Doomlander in a video game, in a video game, though, that is extremely awesome. Techno? But what, what is the password for? Because it's good to know the password, mind you, but it's not so good to know a password without knowing what the password is actually for. That's like me giving you a random password to a random site, but you guys would know what that site is. And I wouldn't do that anyway, because, you know, hackers hack and all that's kind of what they do. So, uh, yeah, let's just leave it at that, shall we? Now come down and face me. Ha 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 ha! You fool! Why would you do that, man? I'm like, I know I was taunting you, but that's the whole idea. I was taunting you so that I could win and not you. Man, I got to the perfect position where he just can't hit me from here. Now, the thing is, is that summoning a lightning strike does uh, do, do a little, little bit of damage to your imaginator, but it's totally worth it in the long run, trust me for that. Oh yeah, by the way, we have Sea Slugger right here. Oh, I do love me some Sea Slugger and all, considering that she was indeed my first imaginator. Ha 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 ha. You see, two can laugh at that game. Ow, you hurt me. Okay, that's it. I'm going to hurt you like you hurt me, just even worse. Dude, I'm literally like right here. How are you missing me? Yes, I know I'm not tough some of this game. Is that not clear to you? I don't think he does hate it, though. Hating it, he does not. He loves breaking it to me. Oh, boy. Do they have to bring in the fire dudes as well? Nobody likes to fire mange dudes. Okay, watch out for the fireball. Or, you know, just not at all. Although I am a fire starter, so technically I should be just immune to fire. Okay, let's finish this suit off while we still have health. Or, you know, we could just die before we even hit by anything because hitboxes in this game are stupid. Hashtag blame for your uh, fire spell punks and all. So let's finish this fight off with Gusto. I'm sure he's got this, or at least hopefully he does anyway. I'm so glad his Gusto's glory because I don't think anyone else's does. You know what? I take it back. I don't think this guy's got this. Not unless to take down that fire mage, mind you. Which doesn't seem to want to happen right here. Told you so! Why do I even trust this guy, man? I mean, like, that's why I get the trust in a core. Even though he's not even a core, he's a... He's a trap master. Come on, I thought a trap master would handle himself, but, nah, but never mind, looks like I got to use my boy instead. But hey, he did get his kind of, like, cameo appearance before, so I'm glad he can have much more of a uh, cameo appearance in this episode. Okay, 
okay, uh, the Scar Runners take note from the Knight of the Awesomeness right here because, man, he is absolutely crushing this guy. On Nightmare Mode, where he is nerfed, might I add? Oh, that's just how overpowering my guy is and all. But we are going to change our Scar Runner again. I do that quite frequently, do I not? So we're going to swap out this time. Oops, no, I do not want to do that. As I was saying, this time we're swapping out for none of the... No, we don't want to do that. Then, uh, Type 1 Crow. Because as you guys can see, I'm using a Pro Controller, so basically it's really awkward to summon any Scarners on the Pro Controller, or at least for Sensei's anyway, because for Sensei's bases are so much more bigger than the controller itself. Oh, John, I didn't know this guy was fully leveled up. If I did, then I would have chose a different Sensei to get them some experience points, but never mind about that, because we're going to grab this and then, uh... Defeat a battle goal, aka one of my favorite tasks to do. Oh, and once again, we've gone from one fire scarner to another one because fire is the best element, as if one should know so already. Umbrella Dome! This is the perfect time for me, being as British as I am, to moan about the weather because, yes, the weather is awful outside. It's awful outside because it's raining. Oh, though, what's funny about us in the UK is that we have so many different forms of, uh, so many different, like, unpredictable weather patterns. We literally have different names for rain. Like, it's currently spitting outside, so that's, like, that's not raining, so it's not very, it's, it's very, very light raining, basically, which is why you can't really hear it in the background. If that's also, uh, if that's and also, like I said before, my mic is, uh, good enough to only pick up my voice and the game's audio, and that's about it. Regardless, with the Umbrella Dome, I can now always have an umbrella with me, even when it's not raining, because everyone knows that's what British people are like. They have umbrellas with them all the time, even when it ain't raining. By the way, guys, that's just a stereotype. There isn't actually a single British person I know who is like that. Well, I say a single British person I know that's like that. There's one British person out there that I know that's like that, but apart from that one person, no one else. Okay, why is this guy so overpowering? He does not deserve this right to be this overpowering. Haha, -ha, take this sucker. And just like that, he's down and out, man. Okay, if I need some finger painting then at least I know who to call. Who are you gonna call? Ghost Roaster! No, not Ghost Roaster, that's Hype 1 Crow. Do you not get what I was alluding to with that joke before? Okay, let's be jumping on this thing because everyone knows that uh, if you see a big button, you have got to jump on it or press it. That's the first rule of anything, really. The Vault. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Sal. Oh, that's hilarious. Because Sal couldn't jump, he couldn't actually get over here, so he just teleported instead. Oh, that's hilarious. Honestly, I think this could be an episode of Glitch Landers in it of itself. Okay, those locks can continue themselves. Broken. <clears throat> up we jump, up we jump again, and up we jump again. Bravo, bravo. And bravo and myself, that's a bit weird, don't you think? But we're just gonna roll with it. You're not free, you're still in a jar, dude. You're free from the vault, not from the jar. Okay, I love the way how it just says, No! This is perfect voice acting right there. Perfect, I tell ya. Yes, I am. You're welcome for gracing you with the honor of my presence. You're welcome indeed. You need, to, you need not say any more, my friend. I got ya. So yes, we didn't need this a treasure chest and no life's lost objective, but hey, we will find those last areas when we come back to this level with that additional accessory we get from later on in the game. And as of that treasure chest, I'll show you guys once we've uh, done with all the cutscenes right here.
Hopefully you guys can hear the cutscene a little bit better now. Hopefully anyways. Off. So we'll see you there before we end off this video for goods here. So regardless, thanks as always for watching, and thanks even more if you've smashed that like button for me. But regardless, peace until the next one. Okay, then guys, as you can see, I'm now back at the uh, scene of the crime, and by the crime, I mean the crime of me missing that chest chest. How dare I? It was so silly of me indeed. But regardless, we are going to swap out to none other than a uh, hardboard farewell from Taekwon Crow uh, to get this treasure chest nonetheless. So now, with Hard World Flare, we'll force someone in, let's get into that shooting section once more, shall we? So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to shoot the back wall before I forget this time around. That would be quite a wise decision of me indeed, I'd say. Because yeah, as you can see by doing all this, it's basically going to knock down that uh, backboard right there, and then that's going to grant us access to a Okay, my apologies about that cut right there, but basically, as I was saying, before you shoot all those, basically you need to shoot that back wall in order to create yourself a path to that chest chest over there behind the stage, I'm pretty sure the uh, area is called. I'm sure we'll find once we get there. But anyways, basically what I'm saying here is that before you even think about shooting any of these, you want to shoot the back wall so you actually remember the chest chest, unlike what I did uh, originally in this episode where I forgot it. So yeah, let's go ahead and grab ourselves that treasure chest we're about to do, shall we? We're not even going to worry about grabbing that gold, we're just going to worry about grabbing that treasure chest. Oh, there we are going to fall off a long way though, apparently. And yes, it is behind the sign. Behind the sign, behind the stage, basically the same thing. But yeah, with that all collected and uh, sorted in all of the uh, same words as the above, it's time to end up the video as I was kind of alluding to before.